All right, we're here. We're here. Everything. I'm Demetrius. And I'm Demetrius. And Meach Meach presents the Blurred City Podcast. So, yes, again, just again, with Secret of Marvel Secret Invasion dropping, we figured it being such a big summer event, it's something that we should follow. Six episodes, so six recaps. These are only going to be short sprints of episodes. They're not going to be as long as the usual um, episodes in most cases. Potentially, if there's like a big mega episode they have in the future or something like that. But as of right now, we are not trying to double (laughs) record at the moment. So, Meach, you got anything with this? Oh man, as I said, just this is this is gonna be a wild ride. Um, Secret Invasion is a pretty interesting story, and see it adapted, uh, it piques my interest. Yes, and with us having six episodes, we're able to go more into detail with each episode, break things down instead of how we usually do it, where we wait for the season to end and then try to recap as much as possible uh, the entire season in a big picture view. So now we can kind of take a tiny view of it. So before we get into it, let's hit you with the legal spiegel. The purpose of this podcast is to explore digital and print media. Media, All sources we reference are owned by the respective companies, and our thoughts and opinions are strictly our own and reflect no biases or corporate agendas. Hail to the squirrel queen. Your discretion is advised. All right, dope. So with that um, out of the way, Secret Invasion, before we actually kind of break everything down, let's first uh, hit our historian, our Blurred City historian, to kind of tell us about Secret Invasion in the comics. TV shows, any gaming that they appeared. So what should we know before going into this? All right. You should know that the scroll, the secret invasion is all about the scrolls. Basically, it's an allegory for the Russian Cold War uh, written by Brian Michael Bendis. This is after the the Civil War. This is after just World War Hulk when everything just went sideways. Um when the Hulk just ran everybody's pockets, but essentially the main tagline of this event was was who do you trust? And essentially, it's about how the scrolls basically orchestrated a lot of events that happened in Marvel in like the two thousands to essentially take over the entire Earth. And how do they do that? Well, by covertly taking out certain superheroes and replacing them as scrolls so they shape-shifted into those heroes and they were able to bypass all detection all the det- uh like everything like just all scanners and detection and even memories because they implanted their memories and the only way you could tell they were a skull scroll is if they were acting out of pocket or it or when you killed them that was it those were the only times you could tell they were a scroll and basically it was just all the super the remaining superheroes trying to figure out who's a scroll, who isn't, and where did the like actual superheroes go? Uh, and of course, like this story lasted for like a while, and it was actually adapted in the in the much acclaimed uh, Avengers: Earth's Mightiest Superheroes cartoon, where it was mm. adapted, in my opinion, almost one for one. Uh, they only changed up like one thing, and it was like who was like the main scroll that that essentially just screwed everybody over or like who was the superhero that was actually a scroll that everybody got screwed over by so okay. so yeah just know that this that this uh series is basically going to take that concept maybe not like actually do like the full like okay all the superheroes are scrolls because as, as it stands right now in the MCU they there there aren't too many superheroes right now um but but it's still a series. That's why they kind of go on the route of Nick Fury and essentially just Homeland Security basically getting scrollified. So, yeah, that's all you need to know. All right. Thanks for that. And just going into next, something that we're going to do kind of weekly, take the pulse of the people. Uh, so kind of just general feedback about like how people are feeling about it. Um kind of just like reactions to it obviously with us recording we're not trying to like uh, taint our own opinions since we're having it but just to kind of get a feel what have you kind of been hearing i haven't heard a lot of love for but i think people understand it's the first episode yeah so like from what i could tell that there are mainly like two main criticisms if you will uh firstly is the fact like again it's another like superhero show so like people getting fatigued already which of course we've had at length discussion about superhero fatigue and it's just the fact that hey it's the first episode it's super slow but at the same 
And then the main, main thing is the fact that the intro to the show was done via yeah. AI uh, art rather than an actual artist. So people are up are, are in an uproar about that, which I honestly don't care. I mean, people use chat GPT to graduate. So what are we talking about? Or uh, use chat GPT to write out their court cases. Um <laughs> and lose your your license like right afterwards <laughs> that is so true but with that yeah i think people again understand it's the first episode and it's not followed by a, you know following a superhero being mostly as of what we know for right now so kind of going into that we're going to do a quick breakdown recap of the show we're not going into every single detail you know, word for word, bar for bar, but just kind of a general feel of it before we kind of start uh, getting into our next sec- segment. So what you got? All right. So essentially, this is what happens in the episode. So it takes place in Moscow, Russia, which is kind of crazy, Um, <laughs> considering what's going on right now at the time of this recording. Uh, we have Ever K. Ross, who basically uh comes back and essentially finds a like a, a rogue agent who who's doing, you know, the whole meme of everything's connected to everything and just seeing like a series of attacks that that he assumes are scrolls. And then said rogue agent attacks Ross, thinking he is a scroll, and Ross kills him. And of course, as he leaves, he basically gets chased by a certain random Russian, and it goes through a whole chase where in which uh Ross falls over and dies. But then we see Maria Hill just comes up and she turns out that the random person following uh, Ross was Talos, who's the, the good scroll from Captain Marvel and from Spider-Man Far From Home, spoiler alert. And uh, and the fact that the Ross that we see die was a scroll. And mm-hmm. so essentially, like the plan is that they wanted to incite a war between Russia and the United States. Again, that's crazy considering our climate right now. Uh, and because of that, they called Nick Fury. And Nick Fury was currently in space on building Sword, which is like a uh which in the comics is a giant like space station devoted to like protecting Earth from extraterrestrial threats. But upon returning to Earth and like meeting with Talos, we learned that Talos' wife died, and they have a daughter who essentially is in her teenage rebellious phase and is full of anger and angst and hormones and emotions and all that good jazz that yeah, all it's... teenagers, apparently, regardless of race, still goes through. We're kind of crazy. Um, yes, our Khaleesi, if you will. Yep. And and then we and she's pretty much working with the with a group of rogue scrolls led by a certain individual named Gravik. Gravik. And Gravik, he basically is like, hey, I want to essentially take over the, the world and and there's nothing y'all can do to stop me. And I'm just going to like just keep inciting different in- incidents. So that way, when everything is basically race to the ground, we scrolls rise up and take over. Yeah, I think it's interesting with Gravik from his perspective in terms of like there's that one part where the dude walks up to him and he's like, um, are you telling me this? Be- I think when he tells him that Nick Fury is back and he's like, are you telling me this for the cause or for me? And then he's like, and then the dude tells him you are the cause. And he's like, no, the cause is home. So like throughout the entire course of like the episode, it's like they are trying to turn Earth into their home, which was interesting when I thought about it, because I was like, why are you relying on Nick Fury to get you a new home uh, for the scrolls? Because like, obviously they are nomads at the moment. And I literally was like, Thor, like, obviously they didn't meet Thor or like the Guardians of the Galaxy, but I feel like Nick Fury isn't suitable to like go to other planets to like find them a home. I mean, even Captain Marvel's in the wind most of the time. Yep, he he not ready. And as we see throughout this episode, he not even ready to be back home because uh, like he he not locked in at all. Uh, he he comes back there. He he has a limp now. He he essentially gets kidnapped by MI6, uh, and he got to meet with one of his old flames, uh, Sonia, uh, yes. and she's and basically wanted to get an alliance with her. And essentially throughout the episode, everybody's saying like, "Hey, Nick, after the blip, you came back different." Uh, which again is another aspect of the blip that 
that like is rarely touched upon is the mental aspect of the fact that, like, hey, I just randomly disappeared. There was nothing I could do to stop it. And then I just randomly come back and it's five years later. So yeah. so essentially Nick Fear is basically without actually saying anything, and it's just conveyed through like Samuel Jackson's acting and like his posture. He's going through a like midlife crisis, like a crisis oh, yes. and slash depression because yeah. of that he was unable to be to stop the coming. And it's um, cool that you mentioned that. What's super unfortunate is that, you know, Chadwick passing away, I believe that's what Wakanda forever was going to explore, like the relationship with him. And this is a spoiler alert for him, him and his son because he got blipped away. And so his son would have been like, you know, the age he is now. And they would have been reconnecting five years later and all that. But unfortunately, he got robbed of that. But it's cool what you mentioned that with just like, yeah, you lost so much time from the blip. And like everyone is like, yo, um, even Maria Hill, when they're playing chess, it's like you would have already been like two, three moves ahead. And then uh, Sonia Fallsworth, like he said, she, when he asked, um, what are you like, who's behind this role's attacks or where are they? She's like, you would have already known this answer. So I think what really sucks is that we don't see Nick Fury post endgame, except for like you mentioned again, Spider-Man um, Far From Home. But that's not really him. So we don't know the effects of like Nick Fury. We just see that when he gets back, he's like super old. So like getting back into the story, um, they all link up with Talos. One cool nugget that they they drop quickly is that Rhodey, our boy War Machine, he is like talking to the president. And apparently like Nick Fury was not supposed to get off that uh, ship. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of interesting because like, oh, it was like they they were keeping tabs on Fury the entire time, and Rhodey is the one working with the government. Be like, hey, this man gone a wall. Him and Hill both gone a wall. What Back we gonna to do them. about him, Mister President? Back to them Iron Patriot days. And then you also have to <laughs> you have to also consider that our boy um Ross, who is also off the grid uh, because of what he did in Wakanda Forever. So, oh man, I can't wait till the Thunderbolts drops. That's gonna be interesting. But just like moving forward, um, so we see that our Khaleesi, whose name is Gaia, she is charged with getting collecting a dirty bomb to kind of set off like this war, uh, this conflict. And then again, just kind of fast forward, she does run into Talos and they have like a really cool moment. We learn that Talos is really like a pacifist compared to all the other scrolls like you see in the show where it's like, yo, um, he gives a warning shot and then she's literally like, and he says, I'm not going to give you another one. And then she says that's followed by like two or three more warnings. And then he's also fighting the scroll that gives her the bomb. And then he's like, no, this is mine. He wants to run the fair one. And Nick Fury, Fury is like, no, I, I think I'm going to shoot him because you're, you're getting worked. Yeah, I was like, even with that scene, right, I was very, I was like, man, what would it be like to essentially break Talos and have him turn to the dark side? More than uh, like, hey, all of his pacifist like beliefs are slowly getting chipped away. It's like, yeah, Fury had to kill this scroll, and you can visibly see Talos is just like addled yeah. by it. And like, what if over time, like Talos is gonna like actually kill a, gonna have to kill one of his own, and he's like, yep, it, it's all over, it's all wraps for me. Uh, it's actually interesting because like in a lot of animes that we'll see it's like your own weakness causes you to like uh go down that path of like anger and like hate and like failure so it's like oh i need to get stronger i need to get stronger and then it breaks you <laughs> so he might be on that reverse thorfin path huh, right All right but yeah keeping on going as they like talus reunites with his daughter um i <laughs> like the earth and then uh and essentially like he tells like hey, just, just come home, give us the bomb. And she's like, no, this is for the cause, this is for our people. And then he he drops the bomb. He's like, hey, do you know that your mom's dead? And then she's like, wait, what? And yeah, um, do you know like the reason why she died? Go ask Gravik about that. I'm like, mm. yep. So of course we, we got that plot twist uh mm -hmm. in there that like the people she's working for is obviously the ops and she killed your own mother and you still working for them crazy it's crazy it's almost like a certain anime and <laughs> essentially like she's addled by it um and she ends up like telling 
telling the crew about the plan that like they're gonna go to uh I think like this fair. It's like a square festival, yeah. Yeah, this like festival and essentially like, hey, these are like how you can find the people with the bombs and all that. But and then they go and then like kill Talos and Fury, they all go there to like try to stop it. Unfortunately, Gravik was like one step ahead. Like he knew that that she was gonna fold and he knew that they were gonna find out. So he basically like faked it all and then he planted like the bombs elsewhere in like a really tense scene where it's like where you see like all the like the three of them in this crowd of people, they're tracking mm-hmm. the scrolls using like infrared heat si- signal. Well, they're and, tracking the bomb, quote unquote. Yeah, they're tracking the bomb, which is through the which the scrolls should be carrying. And they're going and they tackling the the uh main recipients, finds out the bomb's not there, and then you see Fury look at this girl and then he knows that the girl is staring back and then like as this girl's like walking like it transitions super well where it was clean it was so so well done where like each time she goes behind something someone else just walks into frame and it turns out like that little girl and thus everybody else is tap was grabbing all along and then he sets off the bombs which kills an numerous amount of people yeah and, and knocks uh like and basically like addles nick fury and then he goes and tries to apprehend her and then heal maria hill she's going up and she's trying her best to like go through the situation helping people out and then she's fury just running up to her and gets and then a baby girl she gets shot in huh. the sh- shot in the stomach and bleeding out and we're just like hold on did fury <laughs> just accidentally kill hill nah Turns nope. out that was Gravik, and then and then Fury pulls up on her and tries to like do his best to save her, but then Talos has to like essentially pull pull Fury off a hill as she's bleeding out on the ground, and then the episode ends. That was tough. Yeah, Gravik was definitely on his high evolutionary flow uh, with that. So, um, man, that was definitely tough. Uh, something I want to talk about is you know them creating that. It wasn't a convent, but essentially they're in Russia around, it's like an abandoned nuclear plant, nuclear field, something like that, because they're attracted to it, the scrolls, and it's called New Scrollos. And we see also that like they have the machines where it's like they kind of like wipe, well, not wipe people's minds, but like it reads their memories and then they can take their memories. So it's like a farming system, if you will. Yep, um, for the invasion. But yeah, it's definitely like parallels where you see like... Kind of like not freedom fighters is the word, but people that are like so with the cause that they become monsters in themselves because they believe in like a greater power. Oh man, uh, there there is a certain word I would use in this scenario, but I'm I'm not gonna say it for the for our general viewers and to not get canceled more than I already am. Um, uh, I mean, wait till Wednesday, <laughs> this episode. Man, and just just wait. But uh <laughs> but essentially, like, yeah, you see like just the radicalness of these that's the word the, I was looking for. Yeah, the radicalness of this group. And and then you just see like their point of view, like, hey, like wanting to like have a home and having a place to live, like, hey, that's that's good. Like it's not bad in and of itself. What makes it a problem is the it's like their methods and like <clears throat> wanting to take out all of life to well take out human society to do it it's it's vi- and it's actually very similar to what happens in the actual com in the comic version where like their motivation is to like well initially like their motivation is like get home and then we realize by home they mean earth <clears throat> and wanted to take it over because apparently a prophecy a scroll prophecy is that Earth will be like their new home, and no. that's why they're trying to take over. So, like, have seen that parallel. I'm like, okay. Did you also happen to like notice how just the, I guess, parallels between like the shape shifting and like all that, and then how and just like the, I guess, propaganda of like the 
like Russia and the Cold War. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. And then even Fury like mentioned the Cold War, like in that one scene where he was in the Russian bar. So that's that's I didn't know like the original Secret Invasion was about that. But if you actually like think about it and then when you explained it, it makes sense. One thing that I wanted to kind of like what you were talking, well, what George Lucas was saying with like poetry, it rhymes. If you recall Falcon and the Winter Soldier, one of the effects of the blip is that it caused, I forgot the name of like that rogue squadron of people like that cell, but it was like, yes, the flag smashers where it's like post blip, a lot of people lost their home. And then also people came back to no home. So kind of with that, it's like, Um, We have to figure out what to do. And then like the world governments are like trying to take back over um, things that had settled down because it it apparently seemed like it was quote unquote peaceful throughout that time because like, again, trauma bonding. And then with uh, this episode, it was like, hey, post blip, it made it much worse for the scrolls. Um, So this is why they're like getting active. So I thought that was definitely an interesting parallel. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I and another thing like I really liked it's just kind of like the well the effects of of the blip well not just the effects of the blip itself on fury and you can also kind of semi see it on hill as well because she's mm-hmm. like like if you see like how she was act acted like in all the previous mcu movies here she's like a lot more how how would i describe it kind of mellowed a little like i feel like she was definitely in the first like her first appearances she was more active and then like in this one she was more reliant well wanting to be more reliant on fury whereas like i please i need you to be the fury of old yeah yeah and oh yeah and that's the biggest thing is like everybody like thinking of fury like as as the gung-ho man of the avengers Mm -hmm. and just realizing like hey this ain't the same man anymore this and this could like apply to real life like when it comes to like seeing people who you love like either they go through something so traumatic that they that they never can't come out the same and it's really hard to uh to like really hard for them to either get back to that similar mindset or actually impossible for them to get back to that mindset right. or just the fact of like hey sometimes like as you age and as you like start experiencing more of life you gonna come out different on the other side. And mm. I take that personally. Yeah, uh, that was definitely just like tough to see it because it definitely gave me old gunslinger vibes with Nick Fury just like coming back with the limp and then everyone was like, hey, you're not you. Like he didn't even have his eye patch, you know, so like the usual uh, kind of yep. just like look of him. Um, he wasn't wearing like that clean suit. It was like haggard, the beard and everything. So I'm definitely interested to see where we go moving forward i wonder how much it'll pick it up i think this is going to be i'll kind of talk about later but the act that spurs him to try to become that old fury Mm, yeah what yeah i was gonna yeah and i'm really interested too and also just of course gravic being a straight up (laughs) demon uh being an op straight up just for bada boom it's like he he pulled that ozzy man he's like yeah i executed the plans like five minutes ago kaboom yeah so that's actually interesting that you mentioned when I was watching it at first, I didn't read it as him already knowing that they were after him and that uh guy would spoil the plan. But uh dang, so now we gotta be on the lookout for her. Um, because he gonna be looking over her shoulders, definitely. So with that, usually we wanna kind of with this, we wanna give like a different award of the week, just a singular award. It was gonna be MVP, but after this episode, we had to go with op of the week. <laughs> Yep, yep, Gravic, come down here, boy, because you you out here making plans out of nowhere. You trying to turn into Sosuke Eisen. You made plans upon plans. You you knew what was gonna happen before it even happened. He's like, all right, I know she about to she gonna fold. He gonna uh he gonna get us killed. Um, so we we blowing up the whole whole building. Ha! Everything was all it was. It was Gravic all along. <laughs> Miss Agatha Harkness looking boy. <laughs> and then you, you had to go and shoot baby girl. All right. I'm going right. to kill you. So going with that, uh, our next segment, we're going to have the big questions of the week. 
it doesn't purely relate to these uh the show that we watched or the episode that we watched but it kind of ties in loosely for each of it or it can be directly of the show so for my question of the week when is when is and when isn't it fridging because with that because uh with that we've seen a few times where it's this like uh character again um fridging for those that don't know it's typically Meech could explain it better after but it's typically a woman is either killed or something awful happens to her to spur into action the male character it's derived from daredevil right uh it's actually derived from uh an issue of green lantern where okay. like the kyle rayner version where his girlfriend who literally just like had no personality was just there as his girlfriend gets uh murdered by a super villain i think it was major force or something like that she gets cut up and then stuffed inside the fridge and then when kyle rayner comes home he just finds her dead in the fridge yeah so it's kind of so it's kind of with that uh and maria hill like you mentioned she was much more active in the first ones and like when she died i first thought of it was like yo i've been in all these movies and i died in a disney plus tv series (laughs) like what's going on but i i don't want to say it was with her but concerning the fact it was episode one and there's five more episodes that's my question so i'm not sure how to feel about that from that perspective because she has characters she has personality and everything else yeah i guess like the main thing is like i guess us waiting to see like what happens in the later episode like is she actually dead uh because they could just fake us out like they do numerous times because people get shot in the gut all the time and they most of the time they end up living or things of that nature like we we just won't know until like the next also fury also got shot multiple times in the winter soldier mm. and you think he died in that and then he comes to find like later in the movie so it's true t- till we get like an actual funeral and her 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 actually getting like put six feet under i ain't gonna buy it um, mm-hmm. so so yeah and then for me right my main question is like like how much or like when was this show like filmed because of the political climate of of like everything that's happening right now as well as the fact that this show is taking place in russia of all places and Mm -hmm. and like seeing as how like everything is escalating with russia and the ukraine and the issues going on right now it it really is just like and the fact like the original like secret invasion was based on like the cold war which russia was intimately involved with and even the show is intimately involved with so i'm just like when did how much did y'all know how much like how like how much did y'all know and like when did this uh start filming because like there ain't no way that that y'all could be this accurate i don't know i feel like nah, they could have done it like over a year and a half but sometimes when they say they're filming in foreign countries they're actually not but that's actually a very good point um i feel like maybe parts of it were already filmed and then they just kind of like unfortunate timing obviously in these unfortunate circumstances um kind of related to that i also was thinking where does this relate to the marvels because the marvels was originally slated to come out two weeks from now essentially and then it got pushed back to november and then we see on the trailer which we can't always believe he was on a ship and he didn't have the beer that he has now yeah again and heck that could very well just be a scene that's not even in the movie that's Uh, true so we we just don't know we just don't know like the other biggest thing that i can think of like another big question that i that i probably want to ask is like essentially are the like are there other like marvel characters in the mcu right now are any of them scrolls mm. like are they going to use this as a jumping off point for like to reboot certain characters or at the same time essentially like we'll do what's the actual comic event failed to do which is essentially get the mis- like wreck on certain mistakes to be like oh yeah they were a scroll that that entire time mm-hmm. uh for example like they could have 
essentially like written off the fact like Tony and Iron Man were in a war uh, in the Civil War. That could have been squirrel related. I mean, say Tony and Iron Man. Oh, I'm like my my apology. Tony and Cap, like their whole Civil War could have been due to squirrels and part of it was but most of it wasn't so it it begs questions like if they're going to be like implications like hey certain superheroes are actually going to be scrollified but again in terms of like who it's going to be it's like we don't know like could roadie have been a scroll Hmm. could this be how they uh retcon uh age retcon uh ross Mm. And how he he goes from like William Hurt, rest in peace, to Harrison Ford. It's a good point. That's a good point. Mm. Well, but I want Red Hulk. But that's that's we're not talking about the Hulk today. We're we're not talking about uh red green doors today. Uh, but <laughs> appa- but hey, it it may be relevant to this new Captain America movie. That's true. Um, with that, something I wanted to also ask you: Do are the scrolls able to replicate abilities? Yes. Ooh. Okay. In fact, there's a whole character called Super Scroll, which he took the powers of all four members of the Fantastic Four. Like, he can use them all at the same time. And then, of course, when the Scrolls were impersonating the superheroes, they impersonated their powers, too. Okay. Interesting. All right. So moving from there, we're going to get into our final segment, but predictions for next week and then also a big picture view of just the MCU and then this season. So what what you got? All right, so my predictions for next week is probably seeing more of Talos, perhaps like breaking his vow of pacifism, seeing maybe maybe Fury gets galvanized by the death in air quotes of Maria Hill. Got again, got to see confirmation of her dead of her being dead for for me to to classify her as dead. Uh, and then like maybe seeing seeing Gaia slowly turn to the uh to the light side. I think with that uh, with that, it's like you're right with Gaia because I think that like that paranoia is gonna start to increase, and then Talos is probably gonna reach out to her and be like, "Hey, this is what you told me," and she's like, "Oh, I didn't know that. Um, I tried to I tried to help. I tried to set it back, but you know things happen. So kind of with that." My prediction, I think that Nick Fury, we start to see him like become more of a chess player and like getting into position, uh, things that need to get in position and like just becoming more aware and like dealing with that anger of Maria getting hurt. Oh, also Coulson, like he got stabbed in the chest by Loki. So maybe, maybe not. Um, with and, that, you know, there's like the Asians of Shields show, but yes, like, exactly. You don't even know <laughs> if that's even canon. That's 100 percent true. So kind of with that, I think like how he said you messed up because by killing Coulson, you like uh, reinvigorated the Avengers. You got them to like uh, come together. This might be his like, hey, Talos, I'm not playing anymore, but I think he's not going to get active active until episode three. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. So how do you think this ties into the big picture of the MCU? Because everything's connected for me. I think that. I don't know if Secret Invasion, well, I don't think it has anything to do with like the later Secret Wars that this is potentially tying into. Do you know that? Mm, nah, nah, I don't think so. That's so like, I know like you have the big uh, King Dynasty and Secret Wars. That's what everything is building up to at this point. So I don't know if like this will tie at all into the multiverse or kind of, but I do think you were right with Rhodey being in, ooh, with Rhodey being in this, and then Captain America, Brave New World coming out, and then also Armor Wars, and then Iron Heart. So that's like three things where Rhodey might be that that missing link, and then like U.S. government as well, and then Thunderbolts. So, th- yep. What what if um, Valentine is a scroll? Oh, oh, that makes so much sense. Oh, that would make so much sense. Yes, I I like it. I like it. Marvel, Marvel, right. <laughs> <laughs> run me my money run me our money <laughs> we we predicting it now uh julian uh miss valentina allegra uh oh, yes. you you is using op <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't realize how much of an op so just now who all is the scroll who can you trust nobody yeah we're about to get kidnapped by a disney now for having that prediction <laughs> <laughs> and kidnapped by mi6 <laughs> 
<laughs> like Nick Fury, except unlike Nick Fury, who claims that he knew it was going to happen, we don't. We don't know when. No. They're like, you giving out spoilers <laughs> already? Fight me. All right, so what you got? All right, so in terms of, like, the big picture, I think, like, the main thing is uh is mostly just who is a squirrel and who's not. And, like, who in the superhero community could actually be one. Like, maybe this could be how they could, like, redeem Wanda. Because <laughs> Wanda kind of went off the deep end. But, hey, we can make it. She was a squirrel the whole time rather than just the dark hold and save her character. Uh, save baby girl. Or um, or you can be like, this is how, like, this is how, like, Cap disappeared. Because after Endgame, they just allude that he's gone. But we never hear, like, how or why, like, whether he passed away or not. Uh-huh. boom it was the squirrels that did it uh that took him out or uh any just anybody real spider-man could literally just be as well not a tom holland version but you <laughs> like to just see spider-man just rolling around and be like hold up was that a squirrel the whole time um but it really just makes us like like ask the question of like who is a squirrel and like it's so like seeds of distrust, and that could be how Kang just takes over because like none of the superheroes can trust each other. Like maybe this whole scroll incident goes worldwide and, and it becomes public knowledge. What if that kind of because in Wakanda Forever they touched on Latvia or is it Latveria? Latveria? Yeah, so they mentioned it, and then also, like I said, Valentina Allegra was in Wakanda Forever. So what if that's like a, a slight tie-in to get Doom active before Fantastic Four? Just just give me a good Doom. It, it, it's past time for, for this. <laughs> we pray for it. Yes, we, we praying for Doom. Wait, that's, thought... that's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy <laughs> out of context. We're praying for Doctor Doom. I'm just praying for Doom. <laughs> What type of Doom? Am I talking about Doctor Doom? Am I talking about uh the Doom video game franchise? Uh, am I talking about actual Doom? Uh, leave that for interpretation. That's for episode two. So, anything else you got before we sign off? Man, not not really. I think we pretty much covered like a good portion of just what this first episode was. It was just the first episode. A lot of no. questions. A whole lot of no answers. Yes. So with that, um, let's get into our plugs. Obviously, this should drop before our Wednesday main episode. That episode is going to do a movie review of The Blackening. So you'll be hearing this before. Uh, So be excited for that. And then we're going to follow up with episode two. But then the main podcast will be taking a break uh, next week. So what other plugs do you have? Yep, of course, we have ourselves our Instagram and our Twitter at Blurred City 22 Come give us a like, come give us a subscribe, give us a follow. Uh, make sure you hit that bell for all notifications. And then plus, we have ourselves our YouTube and our uh, Patreon under Blurred City Pod. This is where you can get donate a little chatter and then you can see like exclusive episodes like we did for our review or deconstruction and reconstruction of the uh, Spider-Man <clears throat> Mm-hmm. One more day. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I had something in my in my throat there. Uh, but after that, we have ourselves our Discord linked in our Instagram page. Hey, come join in a fantastic community of memes, pain, and uh, and just fun. And then after that, we have ourselves our email at blurredcity22 at gmail.com. This is where you can submit questions for mailbag episodes, different segments like geek out, freak outs, random fan theories. And hey, you can even submit like what's your thoughts of for this for a secret invasion for the episodes, and then we can read them out to y'all. So that and then plus personal page, Rogue Jedi 21 on TikTok, however long we got TikTok, because because it's about to go as about as well as uh as well oh, as as, <laughs> as as oh, well dear. as as well as things are in Russia right now. So so yeah, that's that's all I got. All right. For my personal author pages, we have my Instagram, Mitri underscore dash. So M-E-T-R-I underscore D-A-S-H. And then uh, for my Twitter at the Matt dash 16. Again, as Mitch mentioned, if you have any predictions, any questions that you have regarding the episode, feel free to leave a comment, ask us, reach out on our socials or our email blurredcity22 at gmail.com. So with that, we're just going to sign off. 
It's not goodbye forever. It's just goodbye for now. And that's the Blurred City Podcast. See ya later. Hail to the Squirrel Queen.